Okay. Morph target. A morph target is very useful in the fact that you can rewind some data. Okay. So here's how it works. This is my initial state. We're, we're, we'll pretend this is my initial state. And I can go in here and go to morph target. Store a morph target. Okay. Now, let's say I change up the mesh a little bit. Let's say I, I go down and move some stuff. and then go back up okay now in my morph target I have the ability to morph between those so I can morph to the initial state or morph beyond the initial state okay just like a layer the difference between morph and layer is I can only have one morph at a time layers I can have several layers Okay. Everything exists on a layer, so or a morph. So if I went to the initial state again, let's say I delete this, let's store it again, and that that what that'll do is make it so I don't have the the morph anymore. Okay. Well, there's this nifty feature that does not exist on a layer. Let's say I go in here and add some noise to this. And then add some other stuff to it. Sure, let's clip it too. Love this clip brush, as you can tell. Okay, now there's something here called the morph brush. Okay, and the morph brush will take it back to what it used to be. Say I start drawing in this area. Well, if I keep drawing, it'll take it back to its initial state of a ball where I stored the morph target. So that's pretty neat in the fact that, you know, you have a brush that kind of goes back in time uh, depending upon where you stored the morph. And you can store the morph at any time, you know what I mean? So, like, I could have the huge change here to begin with. And I could store a morph target. So I'll delete this one and store a new one. And then... I can add some tomfoolery to it, like some uh, form brush. And let's say I go out of the bounds of the form and I go way out here. <laughs> well, if I take the morph brush. I can choose where I want that that morph. Very, very useful. Very useful. And I can even flatten this back out. So if I want a surface that's always flat um, and keep repairing it over and over again, I can just store a morph when it's flat. And then I can you know I can feel free about adding texture to the entire rest of the mesh and just fix that one flat point case in point let's say I wanted to re-add some noise into this area okay oops I made a mistake and I got some noise over here 
what should I do about it? Well, I could go to the morph brush and then I can carefully go in here and fade that out. Okay. So that's the usefulness of the morph. Okay, now that we see what Morph can do, let's go on to the next video.